common complaint about Renoise is that the standard reverb is rather basic and even the MP reverb device isn't as flexible as third party VSTs. This is true, but those external plugins are designed and programmed with a singular purpose. Whereas Renoise is a full audio application, meaning you have the option to use the native reverbs as links in a chain of other effects, devices and tracks to create something much more powerful. When you add reverb to a track and try to affect it with the other devices, the entire sound running through this track will be changed. Which is fine if that's what you're after, but what I'm going to demonstrate is how to add character to the reverb only. For that, you require two things. A send device to split the track's audio, which ensures that the original audio continues unaltered, and the lowering of the reverb's dry mix, usually to zero so that any changes made are pure reverb audio. When you insert a send device, make sure to set it to keep source to keep the original sound and set the receiver to the send track you want to use. If you're watching this and are unfamiliar with Renoise, a send track is pretty much like an aux auxiliary channel on a mixing desk or other audio workstation. With the amount slider, you can choose how much of the audio is sent while the panning sets the balance for how much of the left and right channels are sent. For example, the sample has the words left and right only on those channels. Left, left, right. Right, left. This can be incredibly useful as we'll see later on. In the send track, you'll typically want to insert other effects before the reverb, as this affects the sound before it's fed in and so works with the reverbs repeating and dampening. Light. Light. When placed after the reverb, the entirety of the echoes have the effect applied to them. Light. As usual though, there's no proper way of doing things, so if it sounds cool, use it. Narration is almost always recorded flat and in mono, so adding some subtle depth is an excellent way to bring it to life. Still, the clarity of the speech must be preserved, so anything added should merely enhance what's already present. A minor amount of chorus, combined with a small room size and a lot of width and dampening, will work perfectly. Always remember you have the post mixer device available to fine tune the output volume and panning, so you can find the right balance between the reverb and the original sound. Let's say you have a regular sounding instrument and you really want to make the atmosphere that it generates sound distinctive. If it's not likely to be smothered by other sounds in the mix, it can be worth putting in the extra time and effort to experiment with using effects in unusual ways. Here we have a guitar that is split left and right, with each sent to a different send track. There's a long reverb with a bit of extra colour given here, but the real excitement is generated by the flanger, which features a massive amount of amplitude and feedback. There are some differences between the left and right versions because we don't want them to behave exactly the same. Unless you're wearing headphones, it may not be immediately obvious what the flangers do, 
but if I turn them off and on again, you can hear that it gives the reverb a more complex personality. And turning the feedback up to 100% should clue you in even further. This is a good trick to use while you're fine-tuning the values of a device. Exaggerate some of the values to get a feel for how the reverb is being affected, then bring it back to something more reasonable when you're done. Sometimes you just want the reverb to flesh out the sound of another more dominant effect without leaving long echo trails behind that can muddy up a busy mix. This is easily done with the signal follower, which when linked to the room size will instantly change the amount of reverb in time with the volume of the original sound. It can take a while to tweak the settings of the signal follower to get the result that's right for the sound you're using. And if you prefer to have a fixed room size with a little bit of after echo instead of a sudden stop, then just link to the wet mix parameter instead. When you want to give a particular sound some really epic reverb without interfering with the clarity of the other instruments, it's impossible to do this with just a single instance of reverb. And if you want the epicness to soar at both the extreme left and right edges of the mix, consider using a third, leaner reverb to plug up the hole that would otherwise be present in the middle. So there's three send devices going to three separate send tracks, left, center, and right. The central one uses a short duration with some filtering and a reduced width to keep its presence compact. At the sides, I've also made things more interesting by sending the left reverb to the right speaker and vice versa. Though note this obviously won't make any difference if the sound source is in mono. Under the old vibrant sun. The final example relies on each send track using another send device to feed its audio into the next send track. So the tracks are linked together in a chain while also outputting their own reverb to the master track. Note that the effect of the distortion is cumulative since the send device appears after it in the chain. The panning moves around between tracks while the distortion and reverb effects keep increasing though they're prevented from spiralling out of control by dampening and reductions in volume. As you can imagine, there's a lot of scope here to experiment with different effects that could replace the distortion, or different ways of channeling the audio via send devices within send tracks. And that's really the point of this video to showcase some of the fundamental methods of creating interesting reverb using only the native effects. It's not always about perfectly simulating a realistic environment, so get in there and play around with linking them up.